But that was the very reason that I did it. I had to show them that we could rise. I had to show them to not be afraid. I had to show them that life wasn't about trying to keep yourself safe. I had to show them that growth and strength most oftentimes has to be discovered and that the only way to do that is through stepping out into what you don't know. I had to show them that courage fuels dreams while fear feeds brevity. Welcome to The Onion Peel, a show where we get real, raw, and honest about life. It's a space where authenticity lives and hope resides. The Onion Peel is a place where we peel back the layers of our stories and discover the unexpected flavoring that each one brings. Hey guys, I'm your host and semi-crazy Christian, Angela McConnell. I'm a middle-aged mom of five with a dead husband, and I've been through some shit in my life. Now, I'm on a mission, a mission to bring hope to the world. So join me as we journey through this onion and find hope in the tears. You ready to peel this thing? Welcome, welcome everyone to this edition of The Onion Peel. Thanks for being here with me to share your time. My heart thanks you. I thank you. First things first, I got a new microphone, you guys, and I'm talking on it right now, and I'm super nervous about it. I've tested it for a few days all the way around, and I think that it's going to be good, but I'm still like, "Mm, is this really going to help? I don't know. But I decided, hey, got to step out. Got to get out of what's comfortable and into uncomfortable, which in this particular situation is a new microphone. So hopefully this is going to help me efficiency-wise in my editing. I don't think so much that you're going to hear any difference. I'm just hoping it's going to pick up less background noise and the like, which then helps me when I go to edit these episodes. So here we go. I want to pick up today pretty much where I left off last week, where I talked about confronting fear so that we are released to be able to walk into something new and that giving myself permission to dream was a huge part of that. And that's pretty much exactly what I did. I started to dream and I dreamed big. And so probably a couple months before the actual one year anniversary, I had started processing the fact that I needed to find a way to make us more financially secure. I had lost Don's income and I thought, man, I got to find a way to replace that. And so through much research, I came upon the idea that I was going to open a business. I knew that I had to do something and that it had to be something that was going to work into our current situation of me not being able to leave my job and the business that I already had going. And the fact that I hardly had any money to invest in doing something new. I had a little bit of savings that I had squandered away And it was pretty much all I had to get something new going. And so I had to find something that was not going to have a lot of capital investment on the forefront. So all that analysis led me to the answer of opening up a service-based business. All that was going to be required was basically an office and a computer. So Pretty low initial startup and pretty low maintenance. I then talked to my oldest son and said, hey, 
would you be willing to be the hands and feet of this business? Because I can't leave what I'm doing, but it's an opportunity and a chance to possibly build a legacy for our family. Of course, he jumped right on and said, absolutely, would love to. I'll quit my job and do it. And he was excited about it. So this was the narrative that was happening about 10 months out after Don's death. You see, we all wanted to walk into something new. And part of that newness was something that wasn't existing where we were currently living. We wanted to be someplace else. Some place where the sun shines every day, not up north in the gray. So it was really a twofold dream. Achieve financial security and success and do that in a place where the sun is shining and the weather is warm. And so with that overall dream in mind, through all of my research, the compass pointed us to Atlanta, Georgia, to be the place that we were going to step out into this new venture. And please understand, I was scared out of my mind. I couldn't tell anybody because I know everybody was just going to say that I'm nuts. What does she think she's doing? She doesn't have any money to be doing this. She's just trying to escape. Yada, yada, yada. So I knew I was going to have no support emotionally from this choice, this decision. But that's okay. I'm used to being a lone wolf and doing what I got to do. So that being said, it just made it extra difficult to take this risk because I knew that I wasn't going to have anyone in my corner. But I wasn't going to let that stop me. I had to do it. I wasn't going to let fear stop me. And I was going to step into something that was uncomfortable. And I was going to take a chance. I was going to dream. And I was going to put the steps together to walk forward into that dream. So I have my big dreams in my small little hands. And it occurs to me that I never really consulted with God to see what he thought about it all. And being a person of faith, I'm kind of supposed to do that. But to be honest, my first thought was, I don't really care what he thinks, because I'm doing this anyways. But eventually, I decided, you know what, I probably should have a conversation with him. So I start to give him my dissertation on what my future is going to look like. and. I realize that it's not much of a conversation. It's more of a proclamation that I'm giving to him, stating what I'm going to be doing, and that it would be really great if he came along to help. But whether he does or he doesn't, I'm still going forward. And here's the funny thing. After I got done with that little speech, I got this picture in my head. And God kind of had this grin on his face, as if he was chuckling, saying, who do you think gave you that dream in the first place? And I was kind of like, true dat. So if that's the case, then please, I'm asking for directions. I'm asking for you to show up to tell me what I should be doing when I should be doing it, and how I should be doing it. And let me tell you, he gave me some signs, literally. And that's kind of what I would like to spend the rest of this episode sharing with you were the signs that I received as I walked forward into this big dream. So, sign number one. The first thing that I needed to do was find myself a business attorney. I had to have someone who was going to help me legally set up my LLC and 
guide me into what needed to be done in the state of Georgia while still knowing enough to continue to guide me with my business that I already had going in my current state. So this person had to wear two hats. And I was nervous about that because I thought, geez, how many attorneys are licensed in multiple states that are going to be at my level, which is, you know, small business owner. I'm not a corporation. So that was my first task. So I get online and I start Googling. And wouldn't you know, the very first attorney I come across, the very first one I just happen to lay my eyes on, you'll never guess where he happened to be licensed to practice law. Yep, you guessed it. Two states. The one that I was in and the one that I wanted to go to. Now, come on, literally the first name. Coincidence? Nah. That was a sign, baby. That was a wham bam sign from the Lord. It was like, boom, here you go. Sign number one that I'm with you. It was too easy. This attorney couldn't have been nicer. Great guy. And you'll never believe what we had in common. Yep, he lost his dad to suicide. Now seriously, you guys, that is not random. That is God putting people together for purpose. Sign two. About a week later, I had to sign the paperwork. So the actual rubber meets the road moment. And with signing the paperwork meant giving him the retainer, which meant basically giving him the majority of the little bit that I had saved. And that scared the hell out of me. Because once I did that, there's no turning back. June 1st, late afternoon, standing in my office, I signed all the paperwork. Done deal. And I was stunned because I did it. I jumped. And sometimes you don't really know how brave you are. You think you are, but until you choose to run into the fire, you don't know. And so in that moment, I knew. I stepped out in crazy risk mode. This isn't just me. This is me, sole person responsible for all these kids. And that's the part that terrified me the most. It was never about failing myself. The fear was about letting my kids down doing them a disservice, messing up an already messed up family life. It was always about my kids. But that was the very reason that I did it. I had to show them that we could rise. I had to show them to not be afraid. I had to show them that life wasn't about trying to keep yourself safe. I had to show them that growth and strength most oftentimes has to be discovered and that the only way to do that is through stepping out into what you don't know. I had to show them that courage fuels dreams while fear feeds brevity. I felt completely empowered in that moment and also completely terrified. But I think overall, I was just relieved. Relieved that I actually jumped off the cliff. And as I was free falling, I got in the car and I headed home. 
Little did I know that sign number two was about to show itself. When I got home, I walked in the door and House Hunters was on HGTV. Now, let me just digress for a moment to give you a little backstory, just so you can understand the magnitude of sign two. For us, watching House Hunters was like being able to have the great escape. We had been watching it diligently since Don had died. It was such enjoyment for us to be able to pretend that we had a different life or that we were going to have a different life, a life outside of suicide. So basically, House Hunters was our jam. So it wasn't out of the norm for me to walk in the house and have HGTV House Hunters on the TV. Now bear with me because I need to add a little bit more backstory to the backstory. But I promise I'll bring it all around. About six weeks prior to this was the kids' spring break. And right about that time is when I really started formulating the possibility of doing this business down south. And I was doing all my research. And last minute, I said to the kids, hey, why don't we spend spring break down in Georgia and we'll just check it out. And so that's what we did. We were down there for a week. We loved it, had a great time just sort of getting the feel for the area, just all in the sense of trying to gather information on what forward movement was going to look like. One of the towns that we visited while we were down in the metro Atlanta area was Ackworth, Georgia. And we just all really enjoyed that town. I can't specifically tell you why other than there was something very familiar feeling about it and it had a very strong sense of home for the kids and I. And as we wrapped our trip up, everybody to a T said that if we ever got to move, Ackworth would be the town that we would pick to actually live in. Okay, so back to signing day now. I walk in the house after just signing the paperwork to start this business. The new House Hunters episode is just beginning. I'm taking off my coat as they're setting the stage for where this family is going to be looking for their new home. And I'm sure you've already guessed it. Where were they looking to buy? Yep, Ackworth, Georgia. I'm telling you, I literally almost collapsed. It had only been maybe 45 minutes to an hour since I had just signed everything. And I'm walking in to a sign from God saying, I got you. It was so affirming. I can't even begin to tell you. And I don't think I ever slept so sound as I did that night because I was so comforted that even though I was free falling, I knew my parachute was there. So there you go. Sign two. I know, some of you are thinking, that's just a coincidence. No, I'm telling you I was there. There was no coincidence about it. I could feel it inside of my soul. I knew, I knew it was a confirmation. There was no doubt in my mind. Moving on to sign number three. Now, sign number three happened after Mount Mitchell. And straight up is my favorite sign from God that I've ever received in my life. 
Didn't say it was the best necessarily. I just said it was my favorite because he blatantly showed up in such obviousness that I just have to laugh because you can't deny or discount or even debate this one. So we leave Mount Mitchell. We had done our excursion to the top, spread Don's ashes, and now the next day we are heading to Georgia. It had been a little over three weeks since I signed the paperwork, and so it made sense to combine the one-year anniversary trip with then driving to Georgia to start to get ideas for office space. So in a sense, the second half of our anniversary trip was really a business trip. Now, let's just recap emotionally for one quick second. For those of you that didn't listen to my Mount Mitchell episode, you really got to go back and listen to that one. It's called She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain. It was a heavy, heavy experience in my life. And so coming off of that, I wasn't exactly filled with enthusiasm or energy. I was in dire pain from my knee, not to mention my feet. And I just wasn't mentally in a place that I felt very encouraged or really had very much hope. But nonetheless, we get to Atlanta. And about the second day we're there, we start our preliminary search for an office. Now, we have been driving around most of the day. And quite honestly, I'm tired and way cranky at this point. But there was one more lead on a space that we wanted to check out. So we were looking for this specific complex. I didn't even know, to be honest with you, what town it was in. We had looked at so many different areas that day that my mind was just all boggled together anyway. And now it's late. It's starting to get dark out. And I got all turned around and I sort of just kind of stopped the car and I was like, you know what? I don't even know what I think anymore about anything. The whole day had been not very productive or fruitful for that matter. And I was just kind of done. I didn't want to do anything more. In fact, I was very much doubting whether I even wanted to keep doing this business because it just felt overwhelming and too hard. So as I pull into this intersection area, it's pitch dark now. And I turn to my oldest son and I say, you know what? I don't even know anything anymore. I'm tired. I'm in pain. This day has been pointless. I'm just kind of done. And who in the hell knows where we're even at? And as soon as I said that, he looks out the window and says, Uh, Mom? And I was like, yeah. Well, I think I know where we're at. I said, really? Where's that? And he said, exactly where we're supposed to be? And I said, what the hell does that mean? I'm not in the mood for jokes. I'm not in the mood for funny. I'm just not in the mood for anything. And he said, look at that. And I look over and he's pointing to a street sign. A literal green with white lettering street sign that we were now stopped under. And I shit you not, people, that street sign said McConnell, Atlanta. It had McConnell on top and then the perpendicular said Atlanta. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was like, are you flipping kidding me right now? There's a street sign that says McConnell, Atlanta. And we just happened to be sitting 
underneath it. No way in hell is that even possible. Isn't it amazing that right in the middle of all my doubt, all my frustration, my mental exhaustion and hopelessness, God sends a sign, a literal sign. That's crazy. I can't even begin to describe to you just how beautifully overwhelming that sign was. And look, you'll never be able to tell me that that's a coincidence. There's just no way. Because it's too specific in its placement and in its timing. It was simply perfect. God is so fun. Okay, onward to sign number four, the final sign for today. So we come home from the whole one year anniversary ash toss slash crazy sign business trip. And I'm feeling pretty good, pretty encouraged, pretty hopeful for the moment, at least. I'm back. I'm focused. I'm busy. Got lots to do to get things rolling with this business. And things are going pretty good. Until they weren't. And as soon as things started to have some hiccups in them, my doubt started to creep back in. I mean, I'm only human. And as much as I tried to remind myself about the previous signs I had received... The uncertainty just started to envelop me all over again. And the next thing I knew, fear had me in a chokehold. And when fear shows up that heavily, it always brings its loser friends, panic, anxiety, and the one I personally hate the most, depression. So I'm feeling pretty miserable. But life goes on. Kids have to be picked up and dropped off. Groceries have to be gotten. Work has to be completed. But something interesting happened as I was driving around doing all these errands. For three days in a row, I hear the song, I Hope You Dance, by Leanne Womack, being played on the radio. Now, let me preface this by saying that the radio station that I was listening to was the trendy station. It wasn't one of those that play a menagerie of different music eras or song genres. This was the current today's music station. Also, this is 2014. Her song came out, I don't even know when. I think it was like late 90s, you guys. So there's no reason that this song should be on the radio. Now, the first day I heard it, I remember thinking, well, this is odd. Why would they be playing this song? It's old, number one, and it's definitely not the genre of music that this radio station plays. Weird. The second day comes along, and I hear the song like two times on the radio as I'm driving around, picking up kids and doing errands. And I thought, my word, this is bizarre. By the third day, I heard that song, No Kidding, three times that day. And so I just assumed she must be coming in concert or something because they seem to be advertising her. So I literally went and looked up whether she was coming in concert or not. And of course she wasn't. So I was sitting there pondering how insane it was that I kept hearing this song. And then all of a sudden, 
the lyrics to that song just flooded my entire being. It was almost like I could feel every lyric and that I realized that that song this whole time had been a message for me. It was a love letter of encouragement. Now look, I already know. People are going to say, seriously, Ange? And I'm going to say, yeah, seriously. Sometimes you can't express properly or to the degree that something affects you. Because the feelings are so strong that we almost don't have words to describe them. So you know what? I'll let the song express it for me. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. You get your fill to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leave you empty-handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you never fear those mountains in the distance. Never settle for the path of least resistance. Living might mean taking chances, but they're worth taking. Loving might be a mistake, but it's worth making. Don't let some hell-bent heart leave you bitter. When you come close to selling out, reconsider. Give the heavens above more than a passing glance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. Whew. It was such a powerful and special moment. And I just sat there on the side of the road and I started to weep. And again, I know that there's skeptics out there that are going to say, come on, you really think that God had Leanne Womack's song played for you all those times on the radio? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. I absolutely 100% know that he did. I can't explain it, but I'm telling you, that was my encouragement. He was a parent saying to me, I'm proud of you. You stepped out. You stepped out. You didn't even wait for me to really tell you yes or no. You stepped out and said, I'm doing this. And you trusted that I was going to be there. And I'm here. There's no need for you to worry. So you just keep dancing. And do you know what? After I got done weeping, you won't believe it. You know who came on the radio? <laughs> Immediately after that, Florida Georgia line. Yep. That's just because he can. God does talk to us, you guys. I think that we just get accustomed to discounting when he sends us a sign or speaks to us. And we say things like, well, isn't that ironic? Or, man, that's a coincidence. Or how lucky is he? When really it's about God trying to show us something. Or say something to us. So I'm hoping that, you know what, after listening to this episode, when something weird happens or out of the norm, maybe your eyes or ears will see and hear things a little differently. I mean, I'll tell you what, for me, after jumping off a cliff into the great unknown and having God show up with these major signs of affirmation and encouragement, man, all I can say is I felt pretty special. 
and my perception on how I see things drastically changed. So today, I just really want to inspire you, not only through my story, but directly to you as your friend, that if there's something you're on the fence about, or that you're afraid to step out into, I'm encouraging you to just take the leap. Walk out into the unfamiliar and know that you too are special and that he will show up with signs to help guide your way just as he did with me. I'd like to leave you with this. I have a plaque that sits right here on my desk in my recording closet. And I'm sure that many of you have heard this before. But I cannot tell you the number of times that this little plaque has helped me to be brave. And the caption says, Sometimes you just have to take the leap and build your wings on the way down. All right, guys. As always, thank you for joining me and sharing your time with me. I would so appreciate if you would share anything onion peel with anyone and everyone. You know it's my passion and my heart's cry to bring hope to others. And I would love it if you would help me do that. So please subscribe so you know when a new episode drops. Like, share, follow. It would mean the world to me if you would go on Apple Podcasts and actually write a review. I appreciate just hitting the stars too, but man, an actual written one would be super stellar. So I guess that's it. Oh, lastly, I have the companion blog to this episode on my website theonionpeel.com. The blog is entitled A Sure Sign. I'll put the link to the blog in the episode description. And there's a picture on there of the infamous McConnell Atlanta sign. So go check that out. And I guess it's that time to put this onion back in the bin until we talk again. And I hope if you get the chance that you dance. See you guys.